For you who dwell in the shelter of the Most High and abide in the protection of Shaddai, the Almighty, I say of Adonai, my refuge and stronghold, my God in whom I trust. Adonai will save you from the fowler's trap, from the destructive plague. God will shelter you. You will find refuge for God's fidelity as an encircling shield. You need not fear the terror by night or the arrows that fly by day, the plague that stalks in the darkness or the scourge that ravages at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 close at hand, but death shall fall short of you. You will see it with your eyes. You'll witness the punishment of the wicked because you took Adonai as your haven. No harm will befall you. No disease will touch your tent. For God will order angels to guard you wherever you go. Going to begin with the uh, recitation of Eshet Hayel, in the chapter, the final chapter of the book of Proverbs, statement about the woman of valor. Eshet Hayel means Verachog Vedenini Mikra, Vatach Bale Bala Vishalo Yaksar, Kimalatu Togra Koyeme Hayeha. but a precious find is an ancient file, a woman of valor. Her worth is far beyond rubies. Her husband puts his confidence in her and lacks no good thing. She is good to him, never bad all the days of her life. She opens her hands to the needy and extends her hand to the poor. She is clothed with strength and splendor. She looks to the future cheerfully and opens her mouth with wisdom. Her tongue is guided by kindness. She oversees the activities of her household and never eats the bread of idleness. Her children come forward and bless her. Her husband praises her and says, many women have done superbly, but you, you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a God-revering woman is much to be praised. Extol her for the fruit of her hand wherever people gather. Her deeds speak her praise. We're here today to celebrate the life and honor the memory of Claire Hope Itzkovitz Reingold. And I, in her honor and her memory, uh, we have several speakers this morning. First is going to be her first cousin, Thank you for asking me to say a few words. I am here representing the South of its family. And if you look around the South of its family, you can see they're gathered together. Claire's mother, my father's sister, was one of 11 children. There was a huge gap in age among the siblings, and therefore their children and their children were far apart in age, but were close-knit family. My first memory of Claire 
was the night she got engaged to Bo. What a night and what a wedding. In 1974, Al and I moved to Pittsburgh from New Jersey. When we were thinking of moving, I called Claire and asked her to help us find the house. Asking Claire for anything, as you know, she never said no. Thus began a long, close relationship. After moving to Pittsburgh, Claire and I took many classes together, Hebrew, calligraphy, etc. We were failures at the moment, <laughs> but we had fun. And she became like a big sister to me and an aunt to my children. Because Uncle Sidney was a doctor and Claire loved him so dearly, she decided to become a nurse. So our family spent many weekend hours at Chatham. Sunday brunches in the dining hall was our tradition. Claire made every student and every intern that she worked with feel special. No matter what we needed, Claire and Vern were always there for us. I have such fond memories of our savers and the bitter herbs and food that I hoped would be okay because she clearly was not a cook. One Passover, she ended up in the burn unit of West Penn Hospital. Claire was fortunate enough to have a wonderful husband and four wonderful children. While these last years have been difficult, I will always remember her as forever young. Sister-in-law, buddy. Funny. I thank my dear nieces and nephews for asking me to speak as well. Before, 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 again, before Vern and Claire got married, and before my husband Sonny and I got married, Claire Iskabis, Claire Hope Iskabis Grande, knew Marlon Sonny Morris very well. They came from the famous town of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. And very famous, and to this day, I still watch what the basketball team does. They were very, they were neighbors. The Iskabises lived around the corner from the Morris. And you know, in a small town, maybe there were 100, 150 families at most that belonged to the shore. They were all very close. And so when anything ever happened in Beaver Valley, in the Aliquip area, Sonny and Claire would always get together and discuss what was happening. And they would call each other. My husband was 10 months older than Claire but she always claimed that he was much, much older than he was. And so on November the 15th, which was Claire's birthday, he had the pleasure of calling her each time and saying, I know how old you are, and now we're the same age. <laughs> and it was very special. But I wanna talk about Claire and Bernie. To me, I believe the marriage was made in heaven. They were very special. They were very unique. And all of you who are here today know that. They cared for each other. But the greatest thing that they had going was they cared about everyone else. They loved people. They were kind to people. They were considerate of people. They always thought about others. Those of you who maybe had a special hobby or a special interest probably have something in your house that is from them. Because if you were to come in my home, you would see all this beautiful array of bunnies and sunnies. And I can tell you that 90% of it came from them. They were always kind and thinking of others, which is a great, 
a great thing to have. But I have to say that the one thing, there were many things that they did, was they gave to their four children the same characteristics. They were considerate, they were considerate of all the people. Bethy Joy, Bruce Allen, Susan Amy Morrissey Shalamit Aviva Malka, better known as Shoshi, and Michael Craig, better known as Yippy, are four amazing people. To really have given this love from the four of them, you get the same kind of characteristics. You get the same kind of kindness. And I think if there's anything that Bernie and Claire did was that they spread this joy and love wherever they went. You know, I'm so proud of the four children of Bernie and Claire. It is a tribute to them and a tribute to you. There's a saying that one mother can care for 10 children. But sometimes 10 children cannot care for one mother. But in the past 10 years, we have seen four children care for their mother the way it should be. And I bless you all for what you did. And as I said to you at the beginning, your marriage was made in heaven. And you know what, Clary? It's time you can join Bernie and you will be blessed and go up to heaven and you'll dance together again. I love you. Sorry, Michael. Hard act to follow. Thank you so much, and funny. Thank you so much, Myrna. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching. Um, in some ways, we've had a long time to prepare for this. In some ways, despite everything, it's a surprise. Um, this moment is a surprise, even though our mother passed away a few days ago. I think very often about how our mother would tell us that she didn't want her, her funeral to be sad. She wanted it to be a celebration. In fact, she made a, a playlist, so to speak, before playlists were such a thing, a song she wanted at her funeral. She wanted upbeat dance music, like In the Mood and uh, uh, some other big band tunes. And of course, her, their favorite song, Our Love is Here to Stay. So I'm thinking about how she wouldn't want us to be sad, or at least not for long. And I, so I've definitely been focusing on the positives and I have a, immense feeling of gratitude, gratitude that she lived a long and happy life, that she didn't suffer, that I was able to be with her along with Beth and Susan and, and, and that Bruce was able to be there shortly before that in her last days. And, and that um, she lived a fulfilling life. Um, it's too much to go into detail of all of it, but she really had a life of service. She loved, as Anthony and Myrna said, she loved helping others and she lived a love filled with life filled with passions. She loved to dance. She loved to collect things. She loved to be out among people. She loved to go out to eat. She loved to travel. She loved the, her dogs. Uh, and, and she loved her work. Uh, she didn't think of it as work. She think, thought of it as just being with people. And um, a beautiful quote that I was really touched by was by our friend Michael Hopkins, who said something to the effect of, um, in Claire's bag of trick, there was one maiden main ingredient, one bit of main and medicine, which was love. Whether there's love for a camper, a camp, or an old elderly person in Miami, or, or a, a young student in college, or just a person in need of love, she had an abundance of, abundance of love to give. And she gave it freely, and, and that enriched her life. So we've received so many wonderful messages from so many people. And I want to say that we've all been very touched by them. 
And I know that our mother was, as our father was, that her life was enriched immensely by being part of camp, by being part of the community, by being part of her family whom she adored, starting with her grandparents, Adolf and Max, and so many aunts and uncles and so many cousins, and now nephews, and nephews and nieces and grandchildren, of course, her children. And um, I'm just trying to think of something else I wanted to say. Um, I'll leave with a, and of course her upbeat personality, I'll, I'll leave with just my own personal images of our, my mother was, you know, as she started in camp in 1966 when she was pregnant with me. So I, I grew up at camp as a very young child. And so I was at camp for many months or many years before I was old enough to be a camper to hang out in the infirmary. And I can vividly remember at age four, age five, age six, age seven, being in the infirmary and watching, you know, the groups of campers come in for their medicine or after an injury or in need of something. And whether she was giving them an ACE bandage or medicine or whatever, it was always filled with TLC and, and it was always caring and it was always patient. And, um, and those are the, the, the love that's coming back to this day. And that's the same Claire, the same mother that we had at home, giving beyond whatever she could give and just loving us. And she retained that beautiful inner sweetness to the end of her life. And for that, we are forever grateful. And I wanna add, we're also grateful to the wonderful people who helped her in the end of her life. Thank you again for all for being here. Uh, so Michael really did cover another. Um, I just want to say my parents certainly were a dynamic duo and we found Beth and I in Atlanta even in the last 10 years of her life whenever we go out with Claire she brought um, kindness and smiles to everyone and um, I feel that her kindness was contagious. We once my mom and I went, we went to Trader Joe's and as we were walking out the cashier ran after us to give my mother flowers and just said that you really, you made my day. Um, and things like this happened over and over often with, with Claire and my mom. Um, and I, I just want her kindness. Um, there was, I was reading um, the, the prayer of happiness um, and it said that God embodies kindness. And I think that my mom had kindness um, in abundance. Um, <laughs> all, all I'm going to say it was an honor to um, care for her the past 10 years. And um, that was it. It's an honor. She, uh, she was a pleasure and uh, taught us a lot in her illness. And um, grandson, you love? So uh, I came to represent uh, Claire's six grandchildren, myself, my two brothers, Jacob and Benjamin, Aviva, Daniel, and Eden. Um, I, I think one of the big things about Manny that... Uh, I didn't think about much, but thinking about the last couple of days, it was her uh, playfulness. You know, I remember as a child, people tended to think of Vern as the clown, but uh, we always felt that Claire was actually the practical jokester, and uh, she was always very playful with us as kids. And um, when she could sometimes be, be tough, with other people, she was very playful with us and, and, and loved to joke around with us. And we thought had a great sense of humor. And uh, later in her life, the last 10 years, or really the last couple of years when uh, she was really stripped down to her core, she still had that playfulness in her, you know, 
just as she did when she was 60 or 70. And that's really inspiring, you know, when you forget all the outside stuff, all the baggage that comes with life. And she was really stripped down to the bare bones of who she was. It was still the playfulness, kindness, you know, practical jokes she would play on people when they come visit her, people in the uh, Uncliff. Um, so, you know, that's something I really remember. And I think for, uh, you know, there's a lot that we can take from, from Claire's life and from Claire and Vern that we, you know, need to make sure and get passed on to the next generation. So, you know, my brothers and I were very fortunate to know Claire um, for, you know, 30, 35 years, our, you know, our whole lives. And we'll be sure to pass on everything we learned from Vern and Claire to the younger generation of grandchildren, uh, you know, and great grandchildren. She has a great grandchild now um, because I thought, you know, they really taught us a lot of important lessons that, uh, We'll be sure to pass on to our cousins and our children. So I'd like to reflect on my mother, and my perspective, our perspective. When I look at the pictures that Michael put together, I see her as the four-year-old Claire, the five-year-old Claire with her parents and her brother, Stuart, the younger brother. And you can see this gl glimmer in her eye. You can see this twinkle. Um, she had that twinkle her entire life. There's something special about my mother my cousin Daniel said she was a force. She had something in her that was different than other people. She could reach out and touch people and, and see into people and, and connect. And, and she was able to do that in her life in many ways. And that glimmer taught me that anything's possible. She, she would see something and make it big where somebody may see it situation and walk by so when she heard about camp in, in 1966 she took that little conversation over a bridge game about hey we need a nurse and she turned it into her life's work 44 years and touching thousands and generations and of, of children and and staff and she saw bigger and she created bigger with her with burn by her side the same thing happened when she was introduced to an opportunity to work with seniors in Miami. The next thing you know is 20 plus years later and people from New York and other places are saying, please come back, please work with these seniors, senior adults on the beach in Miami in the winter and you're amazing. We've seen you, we need you. And so she and Vern would go to Florida in the winter and, and she would be helping people and she would look at each person. What do you need? Even when she was in Huntcliffe, you know, somebody goes to a facility like this and they, they're being taken care of. There's your meal, do you, here's your medication, Claire. That wasn't Claire at this place. They hadn't seen anybody like her. She would go around the table as the nurse. Mm -hmm. She would do the work that nobody else could do that even was employed there. She would make sure that people were happy and healthy and how are you feeling today? And have you had your medication? Do you need something? Can I help you? So she continued to be that personal service while she was at her assisted living facility and the staff and everybody there appreciated it and that's who she was even at that stage and there are many other situations a small conversation at camp with one of the parents of one of the campers turned into Claire and Byrne going to Hilton Head two months a year to be with, by the ocean with her family because this man saw who Claire was and he saw who she was and they turned it into here stay at my place in Hilton Head you can you can go there in April you can go there in October for I don't know 15 years at least he opened his home to Claire and Byrne to go there that's who they were um, Michael mentioned our love is here to stay they could walk into a restaurant or a bar in Pittsburgh Atlanta Hilton Head South, uh, um, South Carolina 
Florida and other cities that I'm not remembering in this moment. And without saying a word, the band the, or the man playing the piano in New York City would just play their song because they knew them and they Clarenberg connected and people knew them and wanted to make them happy because of the way they made the other people, the musicians feel. They would walk in and the musicians would switch and play Clarenberg's song and Clarenberg would dance. They were the first and they were the last on the dance floor because they enjoyed celebrating life. Um, a quick story about, you know, Claire, with, with this glimmer, with this uh, being a force, or a, uh, as my cousin said, she saw possibility in, in each one of these situations. And one story with me, after I graduated college, I went to New York looking for a job. And the first night, my car got broken into and everything was gone, including my, my, my cornet. The next day, I talked to my parents. I was sad. It was Manhattan. It was 20 million people around, around the New York area. And Claire says, well, go find it. <laughs> I said, you know, have you ever been to New York? <laughs> it was August. Hot. She says, go find it. And a week later, I was still there. And I, I called and talking to my parents. And Claire's like, have you found it yet? Go find it. She saw possibility. And two days later, the only time in my life, I fainted when I found it. <laughs> and, then, and the man said, you can get up now. He, he could tell it was mine. But I, my mother saw the possibility that this thing that was taken from me in Manhattan could be found because where other people wouldn't see the possibility of life and, and turn something into special, it, she saw that and she inspired me. She was always in our corner. We, have, we all have stories of, of how she'd be there. And, and that's the thing that's touched me the most um, these past couple of days, that she's always been there for me. She's always been there for everybody that's here who knew her. She was always in your corner. and. Um, we don't have that now, except for the memory that she was always in our corner. She was always there for us. And so if we ever have um, doubt, uncertainty, um, we know that Claire would have said, go for it. You can do it. And um, that's who she was. Um, and it's still with us. And I wanted to share. Um, in honor, our Claire's great friend, Sally Schweitzer, said, you know what Claire would have wanted at her funeral? And we know she wouldn't. She has a playlist. That, but here she said she would want me to play uh, my horn for her. So in this nice warm day, um, with this nice frozen instrument, um, Claire and Byrne had that song that was at their wedding, their wedding song and their whole life, All Love Is Here To Stay. And so I, I'm gonna play this for my mother.
90 years on this earth, Claire was a daughter to Sarah and David Itzkovitz, devoted sister to Stuart, dedicated mother to Beth and Richard, Bruce and Roni, Shoshi and Michael, proud grandmother to Jacob and Julia, Milan and Grace, Benjamin, Daniel, Aviva, and Eden, beloved wife of 53 years of partnership and love and commitment to Vern. Just as she committed herself to caring for others, so too should we all recommit ourselves to caring, caring for all who are in pain, for all who suffer. May the pieces that Claire has given each of you be a further inspiration to us all to work harder to bind the wounds within our society, create a more loving, more interconnected, more comforting world, a little more song, a little more dance. Going to ask uh, that before we conclude, now we're going to take a moment to um, to to for, for burial, and a way that we can do this to demonstrate um, a bit of our reluctance to part with her quickly is to um, uh, have. Okay, stand over here. Over yeah, here. just not this side. We can do it from both. Up uh, there and down. I, I think we're just we're just gonna put it. Back okay. Imagine. So so um the, the way to do this so that we we demonstrate that we're not eager to part with her quickly is I wouldn't yeah take because this the, is uh, really dangerous. Take the shovel yeah come, come around over here. Take the shovel upside down. Take a little bit of earth and then another couple of shovels full and place the uh, um, the shovel back in the earth. We also have some packets of, of earth from the uh, Mount of Olives in Israel. If you don't want to use the shovel, you're welcome to use those also. Think of it as a recipe.
Claire, it's Steve Zella Kaufman. I feel it is now safe to teach you to ride a bicycle. <laughs> He's ready. Have they had the opportunity to participate in burial? Also, Tommy Bolo, you have a punished man, and I have a very good show. Also, Tommy Bolo, and the Omano Massifal, I shall eat the Matoma, and I made to pay my child by yard. The door lights are the Albany, I shall never put up for the heaven Adam. Let the East be the fall of the heat free mallard, and he shall not deliver a lot of home. The perfect rock whose work we perceive reveals a faithful God, a true, upright, and honest. The rock is perfect in every way. Dare we ask God to account for any deed. The essence of all spirit, you would permit the impact we made to fade. So consider us keenly, for you are a master of compassion and forgiveness. We know, Adonai, that your discretion is beyond us. We know, Adonai, that your word is good, but your judgments at times puzzle us. And though we may brood over harsh realities, we place our trust in your righteousness and accept our lot, our loss, and the love that remains with us forever. Have mercy upon us and strengthen us to maintain our courage at this time of sorrow. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem, Adonai Vorach. Adonai has given and Adonai has taken. Praise be the name of Adonai. I'm going to chant the Elmale Rachamim moral prayer. We'll follow that with Kaddish. It is, of course, uh, traditional for those who are in mourning the Avelim, in this case, uh, her four children say Kaddish, but anybody who would like to participate in the rec recitation of Kaddish is, of course, invited to join us as well. Bamrami, <laughs> Shara <laughs> <laughs>
Exalted compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure. The soul of Chaya Bat David Basara, who's gone to her eternal home. Merciful God, we ask that Claire find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May her soul be bound up in the bond of life. May she rest in peace. Let us say, Amen. Yit Gadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabah, Ve'alema divra chirute, ve'amlich malchute, be'chai e'chon u'v'yomei e'chon u'chai e'chol be'i Yisrael, ba'agala u'v'izman kariv v'imru, Amen. Yehi Sheme Raba mevarach ve'alam ve'alamei alamaya. Yit barach ve'yishtabach ve'yit pa'ar ve'yit romam ve'yit nasem. Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shemer, Kudsha, Brihu, Le Ella, Min Kolbir Hata, Vishirata, Tushve Hata, Venechamata, Da Miran, Berma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shalamar Abba, Min Shemaya, Bechaim, Alenu, Val Kois, Vimru, Amen. O Se Shalom, Mirama, Uya Se Shalom, Alenu, Val Kois, Rael, Vimru. Amen. Ceremony here is concluded. It's traditional to say that those who are in mourning as you enter this period of Shiva, of the deepest mourning, of the deepest grief, may God comfort you among all the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. May you spend this time thinking about all the ways in which your mother made you who you are, all the, the, the wonderful gifts she gave you, all the, the ways in which she, she made you um, like her and, and planted within her, all of you, um, her spirit. Uh, and, uh, and I think that, you, that those memories will bring you at this time. Some of you.